The subject today is the development of the newspaper press in 19th century England. There had been things sort of like newspapers throughout history, and certainly through the 17th and 18th century, these had begun to appear in Britain and other countries more frequently and something like the shape of modern newspapers. But it's really during the first half of the 19th century in England that the newspaper takes the, the shape we would recognize today. So this is the origins of the news business. At this time, the newspaper industry was made up of lots and lots of small independent companies which had become profitable for three main interlocking reasons. First of these was demographics, that England had a population of sufficient size and of sufficient wealth and of sufficient homogeneity, uh, everyone speaking the same language and being interested roughly in the same uh, political, social issues, consuming the same sort of product so that there could be a uh, market for advertising. So the first factor that made all these little businesses viable was the demographics of the country. I'm going to explore that a little more uh, in this talk. Secondly, the legal regime, which allowed, first of all, independent companies to be formed to own newspapers, but also, of course, the law relating to freedom of expression, uh, freedom of the press. Also, affecting the way the press developed was the taxation regime of, uh, of the government. Uh, we'll explore that a little more as well. Uh, freedom of expression was allowed, but it was in fact limited to a large extent by the levying of very, very high taxes so that the press could only be afforded in the first part of the 19th century anyway uh, by relatively wealthy people. And thirdly, the third factor that comes together is technology. And especially important here is the advent of steam power. And in two ways. First of all, you had the steam-driven rotary press, uh, which allowed you to print uh, hundreds of thousands and even millions of copies of newspapers uh, in a few days. The steam-driven rotary press replaced the flatbed printing press um, of the uh, 17th, 18th, uh, 17th and 18th century, um, which could only print um, a few hundred copies a day. So this new technology made printing you know, massively cheaper um, and thus made uh, newspapers more economically viable. But the second and vital direct way that the advent of steam technology, particularly after the 1830s, um, affects the press is the establishment in England of a railway network. England was the first country in the world to have a network of trains between all its major cities. And it meant that whereas, uh, if you take an example of the journey from um, London to Manchester, uh, in 1750, using stagecoaches, that journey would take four or five days. Um, but by 1850, the same journey would uh, only take four or five hours, not much uh, longer than these days, in, in fact, on, on the express steam train. So th that made a national press viable, the fact that you could print newspapers in London with the, with the London news, uh, and then you could rush them all around the country. Uh, national newspapers retained, uh, that were based in London, retained... Uh, offices and printing presses in Manchester well into the latter part of the 20th century, in fact. Um, but until the advent of the telegraph uh, in the 1850s and 1860s, newspapers had to uh, be printed in London or in a centre such as that, and then uh, be distributed about the place. Now, there was no point in having newspapers with four-day-old news, so the, the creation of the steam engine and, and the railway network was absolutely vital in establishing a national press in the decades around 1830-1840. But uh, I'll deal with that in a little bit more detail uh, through the rest of this talk. Now, in the 18th century, that's the 1700s, there really had been no national 
newspapers as such. There were periodicals that were printed in London either monthly or weekly uh, and then circulated around the country on the uh, coaches, the postal co coaches. Um, but most of the newspapers carrying daily uh, news or weekly news uh, were local and there were quite a few of them. I mean, any city over the size of, uh, say, Worcester or Stamford uh, would have a local newspaper by 1800 and that would have been set up probably within uh, that century. Uh, it, was a, it was a time of growth for newspapers at the city level. Norwich had a well-established paper by 1800, as did Bristol, uh, Canterbury, York, Manchester, Oxford, Liverpool and so on. Uh, and if you look at the British Library newspaper section, you find uh, that between um, uh, 1700 and 1800, about 200 local newspapers had been established. Some had gone bust, um, but every city had one, and some of the medium-sized towns had one as well. Um, they were funded almost entirely by advertising, and usually uh, most of the front page would be taken up by advertising. Um, the, the, they, they were extremely parochial, to dealing with sort of parish pump local news. Um, because of distribution problems, there was no point in, uh, if you were editing the paper in Stamford, um, writing anything about Leicester, even though it was only 30 or 40 miles away, because you wouldn't be able to get the paper there the same day. So the, the, um, the lack of a distribution network actually gave a potential monopoly to uh, local companies, usually craftsmen printers, who uh, went on to establish newspapers for, in order to have something to do, uh, so, so, something um, to make money out of on the printing presses that they might have established for some uh, other reason. So you had this really quite vibrant local but highly parochial press um, during the years of the 1700s, that's the 18th century. Now then, in comparison with that, between 1850, so I'm sorry, between 1800 and 1850, according to the British Library, almost 700 new local papers were established. So that's three times as many in half a century, so six times as many. Now, that is partly because of the growth, growth of the population, both the population of the UK, of England, started to grow dramatically after uh, 1800. And I'll come back to that when we're looking at the, the demographics of population. Um, in the period of 1800 and 1850, also saw the launch of the daily national newspaper press, some of which eventually reached a, a mass circulation. The largest selling newspapers in the 18th century, because they were primarily local newspapers, even the London ones were only for London, could only expect to sell two or three thousand copies at the most. But the News of the World, for example, establishes a national newspaper printed on steam presses and distributed by railway trains, was by the middle of the 19th century selling a hundred thousand copies a week. Now that's still very small by 20th century standards. At one point, the Daily Mirror sold eight and a half million copies every day. Uh, but the News of the World by 1850 was selling about 100,000 copies once a week. Uh, so you can see the dramatic um, exponential growth that took place firstly between the 18th and 